Go home, lovers. Maybe they are home. All right. Which building is it? This one? Quit staring and answer already. Who cares? Like, who even cares? <laughs> the bird will tell us. Won't you? I've never thrown a punch, but oh boy, I like to. A good solid pound. That doesn't sound so bad. I'd be just terrific, I think. <laughs> but I wouldn't bash someone's brains in. I wouldn't punch and punch and punch and punch and punch until a woman's teeth are knocked high into her gums and her jaws hanging down detached from her chin. So I wouldn't kick a man in the ribs until his chest is flat and his heart is a flapjack. I wouldn't do that. And neither would Arthur. That's because he refuses to fight. He refuses to be a man. I won't be terrorized into acting like a savage just because I was born male, and I don't want to be rewarded for it either. <gasps> he doesn't want the reward, friends. Mr. Joe Lewis doesn't want his prize. <laughs> I'd ask you to give it to me, but you can't. It doesn't work that way, Doc. You might as well keep the title. Well, I think Arthur has it right. Men warn me. Not you, Baker, my precious love. But, yeah, sometimes you. <laughs> and women don't bore you. Most stupid women. Oh! American women. 
You and I are an American woman, you know that. I hope you're not suggesting that women don't endorse the male identity. In fact, you reinforce masculinity inside me daily. <gasps> you wouldn't allow me to let go of it any more than another fellow would. Oh, I'm oppressing you, am I? You aren't at all interested in dominating me. I mean, what can we do as men, really, inside the male-dominated system, inside the supreme sex class? You know, it is from ancient times. But I'll tell you, I'd like someone to be my man for once so I can relax for the weekend. Oh, uh, yes, that's the word for it, Les. Relaxing. Mm -hmm. I'll be your man. Sure, you're interested in being a man, Suze, but are you interested in growing up a boy? Dragooned until you act like a boy is supposed to act. Dragooned, my goodness. How frightening. No, all I'm saying is all of us want to be Stanley Kowalski. I wasn't saying that. Getting a woody from our own power. Oh, Suze, perhaps a bridge too far. You're a Jewish woman. You love to fuck. She loves to be fucked. Uh, I maintain that we are all fucked, no matter what's in our dungarees. Anyway, is all of this punching talk, this brutal Stanley Kowalski talk, really appropriate? I mean, two people have been terribly hurt. Oh, they surely did. No, can't be. Don't tap that. You're dead. Not dead, Arthur. Dead as the dough in bed. You sound delightful. She sounds orgiastic. It's out of my control. My tone. It must be the lingering effect of panic, of shock, because I mean, these hustlers, these lunatics, they know where we live. The exact apartment. To be. Arthur's barely slept. I'm all jitters. Keep checking the lock. I walk to the door, check the lock. I walk back to the bedroom. And then suddenly, I see not Brando himself, but a Brando type and aggressor, and his gang of Brandos knocking down the door. And well. Well? Well, I don't know what happens when they get inside, but it's a wild image, really, and it's the only image in my whole head. Hey, Arthur, you want to play some sides? Let's give us some sounds. Arthur's had his cage rattled. Look at the deer. Oh, he's just a slop of a wet rag tonight, aren't you, duck? Come on. Some men are the kind of men other men fear. Some men are the kind of men other men want to hold tight in a friendly embrace, unafraid. Some are sissies for bullies. Some are real sports who play along. But the world of men is always one of comparison and measurement. I'm perceiving myself right now in contrast to the two men in this room and in contrast to the two women also. Am I enough of a man? Is my attempt to be more of a man pitiful and obvious? I feel threatened by all four of you, by, by both your sexes, your, your collective sexedness. Arthur hasn't slept.
You've always been very precious with me. That's a sweet thing to say. I don't really care for that kind of preciousness. Hmm. Admit you have a terrible sense of humor. No. Admit you have no sense of humor at all, then. I admit it's amazing the things I don't know about you. No, stand up. Come kiss me. No, 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 no. I want to worship you. I want to... I want to be beneath you. I want to be here on the floor at your feet, kissing your feet. Play along, Arthur. Play easy to get, won't you? I'm gonna... I'm gonna pull you up. Yes! Pull me up. Give me fresh kisses. Everyone thinks we're just great. Everyone loves us. The last of the greats. I want to eat a fucking hamburger. Mm. No, doormat. I don't know how you live. I mean, of course you're 2B, but I'm 10F. Help me, my goodness. Yes. So come on, Susan. What, what do you want me to do? Help a neighbor. This must be what purgatory is like. Always a flight of stairs beneath a beautiful woman, never able to catch up to her. But what would happen when you reach her? I mean, where would you be then? Heaven? Or some place else?
I ought to be famous. But I'm just married. Right, but I'm married too. Yeah. I've seen your husband. Where have you seen him? You spy all that junk out there? I myself am not interested in all that junk. I want a piece of art. Fine art. Something big and messy. It takes up the whole wall. Something abstract, you know? I was waiting at the artist's studio all day today. Had a nice sloppy one picked out. And then I started thinking, where's Daddy? And you know where he was, the louse? He was at Gimbel's, buying me another cold plug-in box. Another stand-in for a man. But more powerful, harder. Poor dope doesn't even realize that I'm surrounded by gigantic vibrators. <gasps> Just doesn't fit this apartment, I'm sorry. These are the slums. And I'm a slum starlet, and it's as crummy and miserable as all that. I saw two people get murdered on our stoop last night. Yes, it's exactly like that. Ostentatious, show-offy. I don't want this junk. I'm a wife, but I'm no wifey. You know, wifey with a smile across your face and a trick up your sleeve. Submissive yet controlling. You know the type. I don't have a television. Hey! Billy! My love! Use the hidden key! Yes, but where is it hidden for me? Try the plant. No. Try the rock. The big boy right there. Oh, those aren't for us girls. There's no key out here, Maureen. Your husband doesn't have his own key? Daddy doesn't need a key. He needs a map. That's Billy. He's taking me out. Your husband take you out? Sure. But when we get there, he doesn't really want to talk to me. What am I thinking? Mel has the hidden key. Oh, poor Billy. Hold on. Hold on. Where's Arthur, I wonder? He's in bed. Oh, well, whose bed, I wonder? Doesn't matter. Hand me my purse. Your husband's tender, right? He doesn't want to own you. He just wants to love you, right? You've done your best to find a sensitive type, an artistic soul. He'd never knock you around. That's exactly what you wanted, isn't it? Somebody gentle. Here. But. But. Men are the executors of history. They're the doers, the performers, you know. They instigate. They disrupt. They fuck. Now, none of us want to go. I mean, none of us want to know. What if you just want to get a little choked? You know, just a little choked, not too tight. Just, you know, for fun. What do you do for leisure? Well, you can't have it both ways with men, can you? Can you? What did I give him? The key to my hope chest? Jeez. Here, just take the whole batch. You like all this junk? I've never even seen the dishwasher. I must have washed 20 dishes tonight, maybe 25. Swell. All right, here's the plan. 
You know, when you're a kid and you have this idea of trouble, you know, like thinking you're in trouble with your mama or pops, well, it's the worst thing imaginable. And then you grow up, you become a woman, and who's left to get in trouble with? Somehow, with all that being true, I've still got myself in some trouble. But don't you worry about me, because I'm gonna be in Europe. You're gonna take the key from Billy on your way out. I'll jet, and you'll feed Taffeta. She's a Burmese, a very fussy little puss. Oh, I don't like cats. Arthur says it's because I'm basically a cat, and, like, I hate water and other cats and all dogs. Oh, well, she's a beast. She's a terror, and you are gonna hate her good. And you can use any of these clunky old sex toys. All right, you want one of those muscle rags? Uh, Arthur isn't interested in physical fitness. Well, we'll just give them all to Billy. He'll love us forever. <laughs> Done, Trent. Bring your tight ass back over here and buy him a drink. Clarinet Clyde. 
to be to be to be to be one do do be one where's baby tonight until till nightingale nowhere Hey, Bean, you gonna play dead? My, um, uh, uh clarinet's, it's broken now. Mm. Shame. Enticing eyes. Nimble fingers. It was my father's. <sighs> Me, I'm fatherless. Create a certain weakness, some say. I'm like that Wheeler wasp, you know? An ideological non-entity. I don't want I... William Wheeler, man. The ethologist. <laughs> he watched the male wasp forever and ever and found nothing. No behavior. I mean it. No way of being at all. Well, that's not you. <laughs> Men get away with everything, but I'm not interested in getting away with anything. Well, murder. Quiet you with your brave mask. I broke the clarinet. Maybe I'll break the clarinet player. Suze is at home where she should be. Uh, no, I, I wouldn't say that. You didn't. I'm just saying I'm alone tonight, and uh, you're with your band. Less of a band than a pack of hungry hound dogs ruled by a wreck yard law. How does a guy become a young gent? You know, you get born the symptom of a sickness in society. Hey, Tubi. It's Arthur. Hey, Arthur. You get sport? Sport? I meant, can you keep something like a secret? Which secret? It's all a secret. Ice it is what I'm saying. I don't want to get away with anything either. Well, marriage. You don't know, Sue. What's to know? You're circled, man. And that Sue's is trouble looking for trouble. I know my band's out there tuning up and we're headed for a fight. It's just a battle you're fighting within yourselves. <sighs> you put me in a real mood. So I'll, I'll see you again. Will you?
patiently wait for someone to pack me in a box and ship me to the past. They do things differently there. The past, where the problem of my personality can seem wondrous again. Meet me at the Heaven on Earth building near the Manhattan Bridge. <laughs> Take the dirty taxi cab with the chewing gum on the seat. Let it remind you that I'm not the only thing stuck inside something hard and unmoving. I only ever wanted to know what you were thinking <laughs> and if you were thinking of <laughs> plastic bag caught on a thorny rose bush, which is to say me. <laughs> no, stop playing, stop playing, stop playing. But you said there was going to be dancing, Dickie. I want to <clears> go. <throat> Let's just go. The girl wants to leave. She don't know what she wants. You said there was going to be a band. Yeah, you're looking at a band. Bands play music. I know that, you chimpanzee. Okay, look, I'm in the sensitive sort. I want to hear poetry being read to Well, me. maybe I don't want such a sensitive sort. Maybe I want a big old brute. I think you are the brute. Hey, hey, hey y'all causing a real scene here, kids. Yeah, well, we're looking for a real scene. All right, come on, man. Just <laughs> read the poem. Uh, how about that? I like that habit in Earth business. Why don't, why don't you just read it, okay? You're not hearing, my friend. He's telling you that you are agitators. He's saying you have no etiquette. Look, I don't know where you all come from, but you don't look so up across to me. <laughs> no, we're poor like you. He's educated. I'm not poor, Dickie. I'm not dumb. And why would a sensitive soul like you be looking to pick a fight? Because I misunderstood! <laughs> <laughs> Just read the poem, okay, but start from the beginning. I want to hear the stuff about, about the gun, the stuff on the yellow cab. Yeah, I want to see it. I wasn't going to hit you. No, stop. Don't hide from me. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm sensitive. I'm the general one. Hey, how did you know about tonight? Who, who invited you? We're friends of Arthur's. Arthur, who is this kid? Yeah, Arthur. Help us out here. I said we're friends. You don't gotta push it. He's one of them street killers, ain't he? He's in that street gang. Yeah. Let's go back. Give the boys a while longer. Or you just might end up with that sock in the eye you've been asking for. Maybe I want to be fierce. Maybe I want to be imposing. Yeah, impressive. Ida, tell me, how does a woman get respected? Easy. Just be very boring. Men respect anything that bores them. I've been having these fantasies. Fantasies where you smash open a guy's head with a bottle of Schlitz? See, this is where you're all backwards. We are the fantasy. We're smart. We like to get off. We don't got to mince or whimper or hop around in high-heeled shoes to get our way. We're choice. I should want a more important job than making Arthur happy. Your importance to Arthur has far more to do with how much you can hurt him than how happy you can make him. What is our marriage, then? A strange sort of friendship that started out with a few sexual... ...privileges? Yeah. That's marriage. Well, I'm through being sexy. Ugh. How long can anyone be sexy for, anyway? Even men. Although they'll always have debonair. I'm sorry. I'll never have debonair. If I was a man, I'd buy a leather jacket nice and tight. Well, I am definitely a woman, and I certainly enjoy it. I especially enjoy female friendships. All that flattery and flirting, gushes of lies and lovely words that don't mean a thing. Thrilling sport. I mean what I say to you. When? Please don't! No! <laughs> Give me a time. I need a fucking time for love. <laughs> uh. 
street corner filled with fantasy. You want to bet she'll change his mind? Be right up. I never told him I wanted to be alone. I only told him I wanted to be left alone. Isn't that different? That's not the same thing. We're talking about you being you while also evolving. Not about substituting you with another person. We're talking about Suze as she is, not about actual magic. Arthur, play the game, won't you? No, I don't feel like being put under extreme pressure tonight. You're angry with me. Well, I told you I wasn't, only you don't believe me. You love me then? I'm... I'm sensitive to atmosphere. No, you know I love you. That's implied. But you can't do something completely out of character and expect me to understand. <laughs> I'm 
getting real nervous about the you that's coming. But you'll change too. Into what? I don't know. We'll change into each other, isn't that what happens? I'm asking you not to. Oh, so on the go. They would have killed us already if they wanted. We know that. Thinking we're thicker than a five-dollar molly, but we're not. You're looking for a fist in the face, Suze. I'm the king around here, and don't you forget it. Teddy. It's not such a palace.
I feel I should be invited to sit down. surely on the make and there's absolutely nothing doing. Seemed like maybe I was here on the wrong night and then I run into you too and um, well maybe that's not for nothing. You want a sweetheart date? Arthur brought me. Oh. Saw the address in the back of a matchbook thought we'd like it. Call me old-fashioned but I love when a man takes the lead. <laughs> Well, that's not Arthur. Well, then Arthur's a bum. You know, it might sound corny to you, but Arthur refuses to be a man. Well, Arthur, if you're not a man, what are you? I, I am a man. I just don't feel the need to act male. It's hard to believe I was even born male. <laughs> I've never been enough of a genuine man to suggest I am one, so... Maybe I'm not one. Boy, what a kick. But you're not a woman. I mean, you're not a woman, Arthur. Of course he's not a woman. Gack. Here's a question for you, Billy. Mm. What is a man anyway? Ooh, ring it, ding, ding, ding. Well, I suppose we could start with an inspection of the groin. Mm, no, I, I think that's baloney. It's not only expected that I identify with other men, but it's also implied I'm not allowed to identify with women. I can't share any of their feelings or interests because we're supposed to be opposites. Well, what about fucking? I mean, doesn't fucking make you feel like more of a fucking man? Sometimes it feels like Suze is inside of me. Hmm. <laughs> You know, I have a terrific theory on this. And some blue night, I'm gonna tell you all about it. No, tell us now. We want to hear the theory right now. Oh, you bossy little cow. We'll buy you a drink. Do I look like I want to spend my night teaching a dip in his dyke how to be cool? Good night, Billy. No, 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 no. Let's have another gin, Reiki. And Arthur will dance with you. Planet Manhattan to Saturn, Susie. Your husband's here for someone else. I knew that. Well, if you know that, then what are you two doing living the big lie? We love each other. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, that is a tickle. I am not your sister, mister. And he doesn't act like a woman. He acts like a queer. Same for you. We played our appearances. We played our parts our whole lives. We are art, Arthur. I'd buy it and I'd hang it on a wall. Man and wife, 1956. Who would Listen, Joanne, you said you'd be our eyeball, all right? The only reason the gents let you come along is because this is your pop's car, so you gotta can it. You gotta take all your tears, and you gotta throw them in the ash can. You hear me? You're degenerates! You're apes! Hey, if they're apes, then I'm an ape. Why do you even like me in the first place? You know, you know I was a tense young man. You know I was tough to get to the center of. But that's what a girl does, Sticky. She makes a pretty poodle out of a salty dog. I, I mean, you're around now, but you're gonna change. Either you're both deluded or everyone in the human race is deluded. You can't make him Mickey Mousey. And if you did, you'd drop him. Sure thing. 
Sticky, stand up for me. Tell him. This is just like Bev. This is exactly like swanky Bev in a real man shit. Yeah, yeah, Bev kept saying there's no such thing as a real man. Like, guys all got together and made the whole thing of being guys up. Like, I was a goof wearing some man mask trying to outdo everyone. Like, we was all trying to outdo each other. Not just the young gents, but also all the men, all of them, everywhere. She wanted a father. Boy, did she ever. <laughs> well, what's feeling real anyway? No, Teddy. You're a true boo. You're a sappy honeybee. You got a girl? Dickie, shut her up. How about this? You boys love a competition, right? You want to win a prize, isn't that so? And prove to each other who's best? How about we have a game? A do or die. And whoever wins gets something even better from my pops than his car parts. How about... His wristwatch. How about his daughter? The watch is fine. What's the game already? Simple. You have to open yourself up. You have to say something honest. You have to be vulnerable and tender with your feelings. Whoever does it best wins. You got smog in your noggin. How are you gonna judge a thing like that? We're not your damn girlfriend. I'll do it. I want to do it. Don't. Dickie will go first. Dickie, say that thing. That you were saying the other night. A about how all of you are fighting against the punishing world and about how none of you ever grew up, really. Instead, you just merged together like a pack of animals because... because you knew there was something about other men you had to protect yourselves from. I wasn't really saying that, Joanne. I'm going first. There's a scale. I know you're all rating me on it, and how you got me rating myself on it, too. A scale for belonging. Um, living based on where I stand on this fake fucking scale because I'm obsessed with the lot of you. I'm terrified of each of you. I'm in agony that I won't size up to any of you because you're all the standard of the kind of man I got to appear to be. Now you want to drop dead twice? Sweet Dickie, sweet Dickie and lovely Joanne. Get us our keys back. Now, can't you see you're playing with the lowliest a lot? They're going to take everything you have and make it their own. Me, I don't want what I don't got, but you two aren't dealing with me. How about a deal, Will? We don't have anything worth anything, but I know someone who does. Same building, too. Cherry, like, right off the sales floor at Gimbal's. Plus, they're in Europe, maybe even forever. How about their keys for ours? Squat. She's lying, Teddy. The only thing we've got in the whole world is the person sitting across from us. And all we know in the whole world is whatever that person says. I'll see about your swap. Find you later. Don't you find me.
find you later. Don't you find me? not upstairs. I know where Maureen's not better than you. I like you get up, stud. Oh, look, you're not getting my red roses. No. Just tell me your blue lights theory. Just tell me that blue lights theory of yours. That's all. That's it. We are living on a dying planet filled with impossible obstacles. Please don't come. Please don't come to the city. Telling your mother not to do what she wants to do is the best possible way to ensure that she will do it. That that comes as a real surprise. Susan and I are in the middle of something here, and if I knew what it was, I'd tell you, but I don't. You are just moping around, sitting there like a pole. You remember what a happy boy you were? No. Son, it is our troubled minds that make us so good at playing the roots on our licorice sticks. We're just the same that way. Arthur is an outsider. What's the matter with him? Is he uh, too wrapped up in himself? Should we just count him out for good from now on? Is it because he looks different? Is it some particular way he acts? 
If you can just make up his mind not to be an always outsider, then the gang will easily accept and invite him in. Sure. That sounds swell. I want to be a happy boy. I don't want to have to certify my sex to be the sex. I want to feel comfortable in the company of men without having to prove that I'm a caveman and I've... <laughs> I've done that job, haven't I? I got married, didn't I? I'm a... I'm a tender-hearted husband, aren't I? I? I love my wife, don't I? I'm gonna... I'm gonna die in her arms, won't I? Won't I? Won't I, Dad? Dad? Will I? Oh, Arthur, I tell you, it's not so tragic as all of that, but of course, we're all walking tragedies, all of us guys. What a piece of work is man, huh? Hamlet. All right, you know the rest of it. I've got to go follow my wife. I wouldn't suggest it. And I won't tell your mother anything. Night, son. Man delights not me. No. Nor woman neither. Screenings nightly at Bijou 52 are from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. Tonight's films are Boy Convict and Wrestle the Devil. The next showing's in six minutes, and that's one dollar plus 15 cents. Hey, can you just let me peek ahead in? I want to see if there's someone in there that I know. Hmm. Two dollars to peek your head in. Be sure it was a dollar fifteen before. Oh, you're yeah, in there to bite. Dollar fifteen for boys and two dollars for girls. with the words young gents on the back. Is that your husband? Yeah, he is. Does he know you're a butchie? <laughs> I'm not, though. <laughs> so what'd your husband do to have you chasing him down here? Unless down here is the reason why you're chasing him. This constant desire to call. Wrong. It's like constant companionship. And then you forget yourself, be self, you know? Couple up to forget about the condition of being human and all the pains. 
plus how damn difficult it is to survive. My husband, uh, Teddy, he's been so gentle with me, even when I wanted to be rough with him. How am I ever gonna give it to him the way he wants to get it? Ask him. Hey, are you writing a book here? Take a quick peep around, Warden. None of these Joe Does want to talk to you. They don't even like gals. And they're not here to flirt. Hey, do you know a guy named Teddy? The young gents, you heard of that? I know those degenerates. You do? Do you know Teddy? Do you know if he's coming here tonight? I don't know. Teddy from Freddy from the Serengeti. But boy, did I hand it to one of them just last month. She messed him up bad. Still makes me a little, you know, sick to think about it. You should really beat it. No fooling, miss. I'm just gonna wait here for Teddy, thank you. What's your bed, man? You're not hearing me. He's in a room full of criminal queens. I'm gonna blow my whistle in five seconds. You're gonna wanna cut out in three. Do I look like a bear? Or do I look like a pig? I caught you following me. Following her. That bunny lives to hop. <laughs> yeah, uh, she thinks she's the big dick solving some kind of great Watson. Yeah, white hot thrills. Well, I don't got her keys, though I do have her man. Yeah. Um, what you all did to that girl was deranged. Was deranged. It's, it's like wacko. Like unzipped. Say, want to lose control? No, I, I'm, um, I'm, I'm not in control. You know, there's playing it cool, and then there's just being cool. Yeah, um, I, I play the clarinet. Play me. Play with me. See how I wail. Who made you? Angel? Or devil? You gotta draw a line. So you know where the line is. When you cross it. You ever crossed it, Bean? 
Maybe with one of those boys in your band? No, um, I never gave them a second thought. Never given them a first thought. Teddy, Angel, you don't have to be a killer. At least I'm not an artist, Steph. I am Steph. You could be my favorite. Favorite? Favorite? Subway train. You're my wife, and you're a wondrous thing. We were not squares with someone else, but I'm on the hook for you, and you're on the hook for me, and we can love like crazy, like wow. We just have to figure it out. We're gonna figure this all out together, and then it's gonna be unreal. Suze? Hey, Suze. I'm home, Doc. Come to bed, will ya? Did you lock the door? What's the fucking point in locking? Fucking door. So Arthur, how's that clarinet? Still broken? Still broken. Still broken. You tell your old man he you broke his piece? Getting loads of trouble? We're grown-ups. There's no such thing as trouble. <laughs> then stop punishing us. I'll do whatever I want. Cause I'm a wild one. Yeah, wild and free. Heart and ribs, like bird in cage. It had slaughter set it free. Mm -hmm. 
No one's trying to lick you into shape, Susan, dear. I think we're all just very lucky that the sharpest <laughs> knife on the table's the spreading jam. Yeah, I think Ida's saying we don't need all the, um, the, the friction. Let her say what she's saying. I'm saying, screw! <laughs> You deviant. Answer that. Arthur, you sap. Answer your door. Snobs. Sit down. Don't you go showing our feet a big shot. Just give us the number of that hot seat apartment with all the fancy shit in it. I don't think you ought to. Go to what? Bust your bitch wife in the nose? Oh, it's 10 up. Get off it already. Two with me upstairs. Watch them. Taylor at the Bijou 52. She was wearing a fur coat. I saw Monty Cliff. They were on a date. I watched two boys wrestling underwater. There was a bus with the cops. I don't know what kind of mixed up you are. But whoever it's you got a scratch, do on some other guy's ding. Some other night. Hey, zip it! Mrs. Take your hiney over here. Hi, Dickie. Hi, Asus. Hi, poets. <laughs> They're gonna be up there a while. Lots of stuff. Lots of big, big old heavy high-ticket items. We are in no rush. Let me go to the restroom. No. You'd have done better if you headed to the National Park. And Marion a Grizzly. There's no way she has a muffin in her pants. <clears throat> Oh, you've been asking for it. 
We'll handle him later. Ice it. Keep it like a secret. Okay, Bean? Hear me? Sir. He just wanted us to be scared of his manhood so he wouldn't be scared of ours. Daddy, 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 daddy. I'm nobody's wife. 